Hello everyone, welcome back to my second channel, welcome back to Jack in the Books. So, here's the thing, <laughs> I have been in a little bit of a slump with my YouTube channels, plural, in the sense that I haven't made any videos for like three weeks. And I don't know why, I think my brain is just in one of those phases where you just decide that you hate yourself <laughs> for a little while. However, making these little videos, quite an important part of my life, so um, I'm trying to sort of get back to where I was with my content. And so, I saw a video by Hayley in Bookland, who's a great booktuber, where she went onto Goodreads and looked up the lowest average rating and the highest average rating for books that she has read. And I thought, that sounds fun, that sounds like something I now want to do, and so I'm gonna turn my camera on and film it. So welcome, welcome back. Um, that's what we're gonna do today. I'm quite intrigued, because basically this is going to confirm whether I have good or terrible taste. <laughs> it may well be the latter, I'm not gonna lie, um, but we'll find out. Okay, <laughs> so the top ranked book, um, the one with the highest average rating on Goodreads is Sylvia Plath <laughs> in context. This is an academic book <laughs> that I read. When I was doing my degree, right, I would only include books that I did actually read from cover to cover on my Goodreads account. Because, you know, like with a lot of books that you read for essays, you just sort of skim read them. Um, this book, I was genuinely really interested to read more about Sylvia Plath's life, and so I read this whole book, Sylvia Plath in Context. I found it so interesting, and apparently, <laughs> so did the other seven people <laughs> who have reviewed it. We're gonna ig ignore that one, because I feel like an academic text <laughs> doesn't really count. In fact, after a while, I stopped actually giving reviews of academic texts when I um, added them to my Goodreads account, but this one I did actually rate five stars, so there you go. We have three of the Heartstopper books. By the way, Heartstopper just came out today on Netflix. Have I already watched all of it? Absolutely yes. I was actually very lucky and got to go to the premiere screening of Heartstopper with the cast and creators and Alice Oseman who wrote these books and drew these graphic novels, but I have a whole separate video coming out on these books, so watch this space for those. And understandably, they have got very high average ratings. Oh, so Sylvia Plath in Context had an average rating of 4.75, nope, 4.71 <laughs> out of 5. The Heartstopper books, number 4 has a rating of 4.67, number 3 has a rating of 4.61, and number two has a rating, an average rating of 4.59. That is unbelievably high on Goodreads. That's crazy. I definitely would say the fact that these are sequels does help because like if you didn't enjoy the first one, you're quite unlikely to then go and buy two, three, and especially four. So sequels will inevitably have an average higher rating because people who have stayed on for the whole series are probably relatively invested in it. But I do agree with the order of them because I thought they just got better and better and better. And we love to see Alice Oseman and Heartstopper winning. So I'm very pleased to see them right at the top of this list. And interestingly, number five on the list is also a kind of graphic novel. And that is The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse by Charlie Mackesy. And I also <laughs> loved this book. My mum actually has a poster um, from one of the pages of this book uh, up in our house, and she gave it to me to read at a time where I was dealing with a lot of things in my head, um, including grief, um, and so reading this book was really great at that time. It was the perfect thing to read, because it just says all the right things, and it is incredibly lovely. In fact, so are the Heartstopper books, um, so I can see why people generally rate these very highly. And so The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse has an average rating of 4.58. Next we have Natives, Race and Class in the Ruins of Empire. This is such a brilliant book. I mean the title pretty much summarises what it's about, um, but it's so impactful. And I found it especially poignant because the author, Akala, who wrote it, was actually born in the same town that I was born in and then moved to Camden in London, which is where I moved to and where I read this book. And reading his experiences as a black man in those spaces was incredibly important, but for me as a white person who has existed in those spaces as well, um, just reading the difference of how we've experienced those things was so moving um, and eye-opening, for sure. And also fills in a lot of the gaps that the education system in the UK sort of misses when it comes to the empire. 
um, and the black experience in modern Britain. So yeah, I rated that five stars. It has an average rating of 4.57. Very solid indeed. The next book is also nonfiction, and that is The Windrush Betrayal, Exposing the Hostile Environment. Now, this is a book about the Windrush generation and how they were brought over to the UK, how a lot of them recognized the UK as their main home. A lot of them only ever really remembered the UK. And then, like 50 years later, the UK government started making these people feel completely unwanted in the UK, basically told them you have to leave or else, and how a lot of these people didn't actually have official documents that said you know, you are a British citizen. Because when they came over, it was a sort of verbal agreement. It was just implied. Um, they weren't given these official documents because at the time they didn't need them. And then the British government sort of just like moved the goalposts and told them, well, n now we don't believe that you belong here. And for so many people, it was just so horrible and completely traumatic. A real abuse of power by the government and um, a true display of how racism can be institutional and systemic. And the book was basically written by the journalist who went out of her way to sort of expose this system that had been going on and try to bring justice to the families and the people who um, were victims of it. And again, I gave this book five stars and the average Goodreads rating is 4.55. Such an illuminating book, very, very important. Um, I highly recommend if you're looking for some educational nonfiction. And it sort of also restored my faith in journalism. I always wanted to be a journalist growing up and then sort of seeing how hideous a lot of the British media is. I kind of stepped away from wanting to be involved in that. Um, but this book sort of re restores your faith in being like, no, this is how journalism should be. This is what journalism is for. So powerful stuff. The next book is The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. Now, I actually gave this book three stars, but the average rating is 4.54. I found this book so slow paced, <laughs> like it moves at a snail's pace and it sort of plunged me into a bit of a reading slump. Do I think it's a huge achievement for a debut author? Yes. And the scale is really quite impressive, but it basically covers this, um, this family through the generations, but I found that some of them we get way too much information on, some of them we don't get quite enough, sometimes it felt a bit random, like whose perspective we were suddenly hearing from, and I don't know. I didn't think it was so good, it deserves that higher rating. Next, and I'm thrilled to see this book on this list, is On Sun Swallowing by Dakota Warren. We stan Dakota Warren in this house. We, we love her. She is an incredible content creator and an even more extraordinary writer, and her poetry collection is beautiful, and yes, I will just keep talking about it all the time. Thank you. Next, we have The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin, another book that I gave five stars. Oh, I also gave On Sun Swallowing five stars, and its average rating is 4.53. Um, and same with The Fire Next Time. This is an incredibly powerful essay um, about race and racism. It is so searing and unforgettable. It's like two letters, and it's all about James Baldwin's experience of growing up in Harlem. Another book that I gave five stars. Guys, honestly, this gives me so much validation that I have exceptional taste. <laughs> like, objectively, my reviews are great. The next book is Project Hail Mary, which is a sci-fi book that I really enjoyed, which I was so surprised to love as much as I did. This again has an average rating of 4.53, and even though I am not normally a sci-fi fan, this had me tearing up about an alien. So take from that what you need to take, and we'll move on. The next book is Heartstopper Volume 1. 4.51 on average, and I gave this book four stars. Don't get me wrong, I really, really loved it. I gave the books later on in the series five stars, and four stars for me does mean that I really loved the book. Um, and again, we love Alice Oseman, we love Heartstopper. Stream it on Netflix right now, or else. Why is my phone vibrating so much? That is actually really weird because I have got Instagram DMs from <laughs> two members of the Heartstopper cast while I'm talking about the book. That is really uh, strange, actually. <laughs> you actually couldn't write that. And also, <laughs> I just opened my DMs and Dakota also just messaged me. That's actually really bizarre. <laughs> anyway, shout out to Joe Locke and Sebastian Croft, my Charlie Spring and Ben Hope. We love them. Next book. 
is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I gave this book five stars. You know how much I loved this book. Pure escapism, pure Hollywood glitz and glamour and drama and scandals. The people at Goodreads loved it too. They rated it on average 4.48. And next we have Homegoing. Oh, another brilliant book. To me, personally, um, this is a similar book to The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, but so much better. And maybe that's why I rated Love Songs a little bit lower, actually. Yeah, that makes sense because I'd already read a book that I think was superior. And when you've read two books that are written in a similar style, I guess you naturally do sort of compare them. Anyway, I loved Homegoing and I gave it five stars and on Goodreads it has an average rating of 4.47. The next book, controversial, uh, is a book that I gave like 2.5 to 3 stars and that's Educated by um, Tara Westover. The average Goodreads rating is 4.47 and I do understand why because it's this really harrowing and tragic, really, story about a girl who grew up in a family who believed that the end of the world is coming. And it meant that her childhood was incredibly distressing and quite scary to read about. And she was essentially abused. And it's something that really no child should be put through. So she didn't have any kind of formal education when she was young. And then she ends up basically going to Cambridge University. Now, I thought this book was interesting, but for me, it was very, it's sort of like an autobiography, but without going into the depth in the places that I thought would be really interesting. Like to me, the most interesting part was how she went from having absolutely no education to getting that place at Cambridge. And that's where she just doesn't really elaborate or explain. We, we sort of go from one extreme to the other quite rapidly. Um, and I, I just felt that that actually was the most interesting part, like how she got herself out of that situation and into something better and then how education sort of empowered her. I just felt like that middle bit was completely missing and I didn't really know why and so that's why I didn't find it very satisfying I guess as a book. But maybe I'm just wrong because the people of Goodreads loved it. So there you go. Okay, last three. Next we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Um, I gave this book four stars. On average, it has 4.46. This is a kind of fantasy novel about a group of outcasts and misfits. And it's this huge kind of fable about judging outsiders and judging people who don't conform to society and how all those people really wanna do is love and enjoy their lives and be loved. And um, it's, quite powerful, I think. Uh, the next book, also very powerful, is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I gave this book four stars. Its average rating is 4.45. I think there are elements of this book that I actually actively kind of hated. <laughs> Mostly the use of italics. Just stop using the italics key like that, please. <laughs> I thought that already made sense to people who have read the book, but that just kind of irked me <laughs> while I was reading it. Made it a little bit cringy for me, I don't know. I felt like everything was kind of repeated and made overly obvious. Um, but overall, this is a really um, impactful and important story, I think, about um, domestic violence. It's, yeah, it's intense stuff. And then the final book is Time of White Horses, which I gave four stars and has an average rating of 4.43. Um, and I read this for my book on literature translated from Arabic. Did I say book? I meant my video. <laughs> I do that all the time. I, in conversation, when I'm filming, I always call my videos books or the other way around. I don't know why. <laughs> There's some weird neural pathway going on there that just messes it up every time. But anyway, um, this is a huge book, a mammoth book, um, but really quite brilliant. And I'm pleased to see that it's got such a high average rating. And look, this video <laughs> has actually become very long because I've spoken a lot about the books that I'm talking about. So I'm actually going to split it in two parts. And so I'm going to stop recording uh, and then start recording again and film another video where I react to the lowest rated books. So I'm gonna actually do it as, as two parts. So if you wanna see that, you better subscribe, baby. And also check for yourself. All you need to do is go onto your red section on Goodreads and then uh, change the way that it's sorted from average rating, highest to lowest. And if you want, you can also go and follow me on Goodreads. I also use the story graph. Not gonna lie, I did make a video at one point saying why I was stopping using Goodreads and moving over to the story graph, but the story graph is still lacking a lot of features for me, um, and it's not so much a social network, um, it's not as interactive, so 
I'm actually sort of just using both. So apologies for being so extreme when I said I was ditching Goodreads um, and I've very much just continued to use it, um, but it does have some features that I like and I want to use, so sort of just use both. And uh, there we go, that is the list. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, see you in the next one, which I'm about to film in about five seconds time. All the best, stay in touch, see you later, bye bye.